Hey, what's up backstage? How are you doing? Hello. Welcome. I'm really, really excited to talk to you guys. I'm Brett Shuford, also known as the Broadway Life Coach. I'm an actor. Um, I need a haircut really bad every time I see myself on camera. I haven't had a haircut since February. <laughs> so um, I'm Brett Shuford. I am a Broadway actor and the Broadway Life Coach. I'm, today we're going to talk about structuring your time during a time of crisis. And for those of you that don't know me, I uh, grew up in Southeast Texas. I'm a Texas boy. And I had one dream at six years old, and that was to pursue a career on Broadway. It's all I wanted to do. I was definitely the odd man out. I have three brothers. I have a twin brother. It's actually our birthday on Wednesday. And they were all Texas boys. I mean, still, they still work in oil refineries. They, you know, they all work in, in, uh, in Texas oil. And I wanted to pursue a career in New York City on Broadway. I moved to New York. I got a degree in musical theater. And I most recently have been, I've been in a bunch of Broadway shows, including Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. I did the National Tour of South Pacific. I am uh, currently in the Broadway cast of Wicked. And uh, I got to say hi to some of y'all that are dropping in here. Tell me where you're coming in from. Hey, Southeast Texas. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Hi, Heidi Dean. Love my Heidi Dean. Uh, you're going to get so many tips today, guys. So I'm, I'm really excited. Hello from Chicago. Hello from Vegas. Hello, Kentucky. Y'all, I'm going to use the y'all because it's just in my vernacular. vernacular. Um, I'm a Texas boy. So yes, Denver. Yes, Jersey. Yes, Manhattan. I miss Manhattan. So I left New York City about six weeks ago. Broadway shut down. I was in the Broadway cast of Wicked. Am in the Broadway cast of Wicked. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Wicked. And then the shutdown happened and I escaped to my family's, uh, my in-laws house. So this is actually not my home. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but it's been a very nice break. Hey, Richmond, England. Hey, London. Hey, Portugal. Hey, Brooklyn. Y'all, I miss my Manhattan. Hope you were all safe and healthy. Hey, Alabama. Hey, Atlanta. Oh, so sweet. So I'm so grateful to have moved to New York. I, I got a degree. And when I, I guess it was after The Little Mermaid, I originated the Broadway cast of The Little Mermaid. And it was during that experience that I started to realize so many things I didn't understand before I booked a Broadway show that I always thought, and I think so many of us are taught as actors that our happiness is gonna be on the other end of booking those shows, getting that job. Once we get that job, then I can be happy. And I realized that happiness actually was the reason I got those jobs. Once I was content with myself, once I learned how to be fulfilled, then booking work was a was sort of result of already feeling fulfilled. And so I wanted to help as many people be able to be successful and find fulfillment no matter where they were on their path of being an actor. And I started the Broadway Life Coach. I have always tried to balance being a working actor and being a coach. It's not always easy. And, um, you know, being an entrepreneur and and finding that those, those ways to uh, oh, so people are saying there is a delay. Not sure how we can fix that. Just want to say hi. Hi from Canada. Hi from North Carolina. Sorry about the delay. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, that might just be how it goes. Reload the page. There you go. So my goal with the Broadway Life Coach has always been to help actors find fulfillment no matter where they are on their path. And of course, here we are in a global pandemic. And I realized very quickly, as soon as Broadway shut down and we were all not able to A, audition, B, work side hustle jobs, C, <laughs> too much of anything, see our friends, 
that's what mo most of us need is some structure. And so I started the Secure Actor Project, which is totally free. It's in my Facebook group. And I started that in April. And the Secure Actor Project, you can go to secureactorproject.com and sign up where we have weekly interviews, Monday morning mindset talks, and it's just a way to hold us accountable. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the principles behind that, but I'm gonna give you 10 things today to help you start looking at how to structure your time. So I wanna know in the comments, what is your biggest overwhelm right now? I'm seeing people want help with knowing time management, right? Understanding like, I, I don't know, are you are you struggling with having to work uh, if you're an essential worker and find time to be a creative? Are you struggling? Like, let me know what you're struggling with. I'm gonna tell you what I'm experiencing through some of my own coaching clients and see if that can help you as well. Shout out to my shirt. It says, bring Broadway back this uh, bring back Broadway, this shirt uh, I designed and it's uh, proceeds to this shirt are going to help and support the Actors Fund. Uh, so you can check out Broadway Life Apparel for that. Uh, bring back Broadway, y'all. It will be back. Let's just talk a little bit about the mindset that a lot of us are adopting right now. And here's the thing. I'm not a big woo-woo person. I, I mean, I am, but I'm not going to talk to you about being woo woo because here's the thing like you have to have your own practice your own spiritual practice but i believe gets us out of whatever rut we're in is action so i'm going to give you things you can do to help you be actionable oh gosh so first we're just going to take a huge deep breath if this is the first time you felt your lungs fill with air you are not alone if you are feeling overwhelmed right now, you are not alone. If you are not feeling overwhelmed and anxiety right now, what's wrong with you? Because the entire world is feeling this way. So the first thing we have to do is accept our circumstance. We have to practice acceptance. Accept acceptance is in the answers of is the answer to all of our problems today. In this moment, we have to accept there's a global pandemic. Those words we attach to The Walking Dead and to, those are movies. Those are not our circumstances, right? A global pandemic is just the reality of our situation and we can accept it. And we can let go of the fear we're having around what we think this global pandemic is going to result in. Because right now we're in a process and what we're all afraid of is the results. Right now, in this moment where our feet are, we are okay. We are fine. If you're on this call, you've got internet and a roof over your head, and I imagine you've got food in your belly in this moment. And this is the only moment that is. And in this moment, we can accept there's a global pandemic. So we can take a deep breath and know that that's the reality. And that's okay. So instead of getting afraid of what it's going to result in, let's just stay in the moment. So I ask you guys to just take a breath and uh, and and breathe that in. Okay, just want to see some of the comments, starting to keep forward momentum. I'm learning a lot, trying to find ways. Great. So here's what's happening with so many of us as actors. There's so much free stuff. There's so much free content right now. It is like overwhelming all the casting directors you never got to meet, all of the acting teachers you never got to take class with, all of the, the things, right, are all at our disposal right now and they're free. And what is happening to so much, so many of us is that we're forgetting why we started this in the first place and what we really, really want. We're getting stuck in what my friend Wendy Braun, if you follow Wendy Braun always says, is you're getting stuck in the shoulds. I should take this class. I should do that thing. I should, I should, I should. I should learn voiceover. I should learn photography. I should learn how to improve my social media. And what if 
we just get back to why we do, why we want to do what we want to do. What is it you want? What do you want? Did you, were you, were you working as an actor on stage? Were you working as an actor on camera, on voiceover? Were you, were, what were you doing before this all started? And don't try to just give up on it. Because I'm here to tell you that what you were doing is going to continue. And when things come back online, and you spent all, I mean, to think about how did you spend your time when things come back online? Did you strengthen those skills, the things that people trusted you for? Or did you spend all your time trying to take a bunch of free stuff? And how much better of a person are you going to be for doing that? Here's the thing. When you're trying to take a bunch of free classes because they're free, you're actually believing that there is, there, you're believing in scarcity. You're believing that there's not enough. So start with what? What do you want to do? What do you do as an artist? What do you do as an actor? Where are your strengths? And then that narrows down your classes. Instead of taking the voiceover class when you want to do commercials, you're just focusing on meeting commercial people. Instead of taking classes in musical theater because you want to do on camera work, or if you're in musical theater and just taking on camera stuff, right, you're, it's, it's all about focus and getting back to what it is you want. Because I'm here to tell you, it's all going to come back. It's all going to come back online. And so where did you put your energy during this time? So we'll talk a little bit more about specific ways that you can focus that. But right now, if you're taking all of the classes and you're spending all your time, and you're like, I want to learn the business. I'm going to learn. You're, you're making yourself crazy. And I'm here to tell you that all of these free classes, all of these videos and trainings that you're, that you have access to, they're going to be available later. They're going to be available later. You don't have to do them all. Pick the thing that's going to bring you joy. Pick the thing that's going to help you be the person you want to be when you get to the other end of this. Okay. In the rush, what is this, Dennis? In the rush to return to normal, use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. Okay. And here, I'm here to tell you something else. And this is not to despair. We're never going to get return to normal, right? We're not going to return to normal, whatever normal means. because there's nothing to return to. We're in this moment right now. This is the only moment that exists. How do you want to spend this moment? What do you want to accomplish in this moment? How do you want to feel right now? All right. So with the Secure Actor Project, the three things that I encourage people to do, and this is as basic as it has to be, Focus on three things, three categories that you want to spend your time on every day. One thing, you want to do one thing every day that is centering yourself. So working out, meditating, uh, journaling, uh, something that centers you. Is it breath work? Is it yoga, right? Is it working out? Is it going for a walk? What centers you? Try, this is at a minimum. You try to do these three things. Go do something that centers yourself. The second thing you want to try to do is do something that crafts your career. Not spend the whole day crafting your career, but do one thing. Some of us, what we're doing is we're spending all day in classes online and we're forgetting to do this, the thing that centers us. Or we're spending all of our time centering ourselves and we're not doing anything to craft our career. And when I say craft your career, that means you practice your craft or work on your career, right? Your craft, you're still an artist. And if you're, if you're only taking time right now to learn the business and you're not actually creating craft, you're forgetting why you, another reason why you do this. So, so, I, so the three things, first thing is, centering yourself. Second thing, crafting your career. The third thing we all have to start to do is create community. Community means a collection, right? Community means more than me. 
community means uh, collective consciousness, right? Is there, is there, where can you be involved in your community, community of actors, community uh, of artists, community of friends, community of, of other people. And every day you wanna to try to do something that's engaging your community. That could be you hosting something. That could be you engaging in something. That could be you watching something and participating. But if you can do these three things every day, you take action on these three things, and then you take it easy. We all have to create space. Oh, space, because we are feeling overwhelmed. And our tendency when we're feeling anxious to feel overwhelmed is to try to force our way out of it, is to try to manifest the way out. And so you can't manifest your way out of your feelings. You have to feel them. If you're feeling afraid, fear is really false evidence appearing real. But when you are engaging in your fear, it's you're never going to be able to step away and see that it's false evidence. To see that the fear you have that Broadway's never going to come back, which it is, when the fear you have that it's all over is not real because there is so much happening and you can be part of the community. Yes, this class counts as community as long as you're engaging with people, as long as you're in people, you're not just hiding behind these classes, right? Are you engaging? Are you connecting with people? Are you supporting people? Are, you know, there's, there's ways to do that. Okay. So the three things, oh yeah, Gabby Bernstein. I love me some Gabby Bernstein, Ashley. Let me see what Ashley said. Um, working on making self tape auditioning. Great. This is great. Okay. So here's like, ten, here's 10 things you can do right now to help you start discovering ways to structure your time. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you create a calendar and because it's specific, right? I really want you to think about what it is you want and how you're going to do this. Because the way I do it is not gonna work for everyone. So we'll talk a little bit about connection um, and community, okay? But number one, what are you doing in the morning? How's your morning routine? Are you getting up? Tell me if this is you. Are you sleeping in? Are you not setting an alarm? Waiting for the sun to do it for you? just getting your coffee and trolling TikTok and waiting for some motivation, right? Or are you actually setting an alarm? Create a morning routine. It doesn't have to be a hardcore morning routine, but I'm telling you right now, if you aren't setting an alarm and getting up and doing something, right? You're hitting snooze a million times. Good morning meditation. That's right. Right. Here's what here's what you need to do before you grab your phone. Set an alarm. Go for a walk. Journal. Meditate, as some people said here. If you don't have access to any of those, if you don't know how to do those things, guess what? You're on YouTube. There are so many ways to learn meditation right now, and it's free. Go for a walk. So I, I, for me, I was having a difficult time getting motivated to go for a walk a few weeks ago. I was just staying inside. Tell me if that's you. I called up my friend, Lisa, who was having the same issue. And I said, listen, I'm having a hard time getting up. She said, why don't you text me in the morning and we'll both go for a walk. And I got the app pedometer on my phone and it measures my footsteps. And what I do now is every morning I text my friends. So accountability is a huge part of setting up routine. So I text Lisa, say I'm going for my walk. I go for a walk. I try to get three to six miles in, come back and my coffee is my reward. 
I reward myself for doing it. And then I text Lisa, I show her how many, how many footsteps I did, right? At, use accountability in all of these things. Accountability is huge. So that was gonna be my second, my second tip. Another great way to be accountable is if you've been taking Heidi Dean's social media stuff, use your Instagram, use your stories, use your people on your stories to be accountable. Commit publicly. I'm going for a walk every day and I'm going to take you guys with me. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi needs her coffee on the walk. That's fine. As long as you uh, are able to get account accountability to do it. I, if I, if I start my coffee, I'll just sit on the couch. So my reward of going for a walk is to sit on the couch. I mean, is to have coffee. Okay. So we talked about centering yourself. Ways to center yourself are meditation, um, journaling, going for a walk. Let's talk about crafting a career. When you're crafting your career, so many people are thinking, and you're hearing this from coaches, pivot, 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 right? Tell me if you've been hearing that from, from different people. Pivot, right? We, um, but I'm here to give you permission to not pivot. I'm here to tell you that whatever it is you were doing before this happened, keep doing it. Keep doing it if it's what you want to do. Theater will be back. Broadway will be back. And when things come back online, people in charge who know you, the people who know you the most and know your skill set, the people who are who know what it is you do are going to be looking for you. And they're going to be expecting you to be just as sharp and just as good. Uh, what's pivot? Somebody said pivot. A lot of people are saying, go back to school. Oh, you know, maybe it's a time to like go back to school or move to LA or whatever. Do what's true for you, but understand that if your impulse and your heart is telling you this is what you want, don't give up on it. So I graduated college in 2001, in May of 2001. In September, I watched the second plane hit from Union Square. I could have very easily been afraid I could have very easily left New York City, and moved back home. But I knew in my heart that the city would heal, the country would heal, and that the dreams I had would never die. The ability we have as artists, as storytellers, as actors, the ability we have to help people see the world differently is such a gift. Do not give up on that gift. What we have to do is focus. So what, when you're crafting your career, what do you want to do? What is in your heart of hearts do you want to do? Okay. Just looking at uh, some of the comments. Yeah, this is a great time to work on yourself. And this is a great time, not only just to work on yourself, but this is a great time to sharpen your skills. The thing that you're already good at, get better at it. And you don't need free classes to do that. You need focus. You need structure. So I think sometimes for us as artists, we think structure will dull our artistry, that we're supposed to have free reign and freedom to, um, to create. But I've learned for myself that with structure comes freedom. When you structure your time, when you focus on your goal, the freedom you get as an artist is so much greater. I, after 9-11, I worked regionally. And when I started really focusing on improving my dancing, improving my singing. I started taking an amazing, uh, you know, working with a coach on all of my auditions, not a life coach, but a, but a training, like an art, yeah, a teacher, an acting teacher was when my audition started to improve. And I booked my first Broadway show, which was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. 
once I booked Little Mermaid, I had an, I had a goal to do television and film, right? So I accomplished one goal before I started changing, pivoting the other. So then once I got Little Mermaid, I had this goal to do te television and film. And I focused my energy, my finances, my time on that without sacrificing self-care. And the result was I booked The Wolf of Wall Street. I've done Law and Order. I've done other television work and commercial work. And it's all because I started to focus instead of trying to do it all. Because when we believe that the universe is abundant and we're not in the scarcity and the fear that we're going to miss out if I don't take those free things, I'm going to miss out. When we're in abundance, we know that we can create space, that we can do three things a day center ourselves, create community, and craft our career, we can do that every day. And that's going to get us one step closer to who we want to be and where we want to be. So creating community. So somebody was asking me about connection. And by the way, if you are um, on Instagram, make sure you tag Broadway Life Coach. Maybe take a picture of me uh, and tag it on, on there. But I also, in the stories, I created it today a thing that you can screenshot and hold yourself accountable on Instagram to doing these three three things every day. So go check out Broadway Life Coach if you're uh, wanting a little bit of accountability and I'll retag you and we can connect that way. So we'll talk a little bit about community. Creating community and connection, right? If you're an introvert, I know so many introverts right now are living their dreams. They don't have to talk to people. But community really is so essential right now because you're never going to be thrust into the community. You have to be searching for community. So um, I'm just seeing what these comments are. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Yep, great. Yep. So, so number one was morning routine. Number two is accountability. Number three, center yourself. Number four, craft your career. Number five, create community. And in community, we want to do things that are focusing on where we're at. So if you're in New York City, how can you help New York City? How can you help Broadway? There are so many things that Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS is doing right now. If Broadway is your goal, you could be involved in that. SAG after in LA. If you're in a local area and you do theater, help your nonprofit theaters. Reach out to them. Ask them, how can I be a part of helping you right now. Nonprofits are hurting. So when you're talking, when we're talking about creating community and doing one thing, just reaching out, seeing what they're doing on social media, seeing what live events they're doing and being involved. Being involved is merely watching and commenting and sharing, sharing people's posts, sharing things that shows community. The, another way you could show community is by reaching out to friends and creating Zoom calls or doing play readings and hosting your own things. But it's really about getting out of your own bubble, excuse me, out of your own way and reaching out and being a part of the collective. And I think the best way to do that right now in community is to, is to reach out to where you are because when things come back online, those people will be thinking of you it's not only just good for them, but it's a marketing strategy, right? You can be a part of that community. So that's number five. Number six, let's talk a little bit about, since Heidi Dean is here, let's talk about social media very briefly. This, listen, this is yours to do with it as you wish. You get to curate your social media Time is the one thing we cannot get back. We can make money. We will get businesses back. But time, you cannot make. Once it's gone, it's gone. And if you're spending your time on here all the time, if you're spending your time on here and you're seeing stuff that makes you feel bad, if you're seeing people's posts that makes you compare and despair, 
Unfollow. Unfollow. You get to curate this, this device that lives in your hand. Curate it. Make it something that makes you feel good. Unfollow today. You can follow back tomorrow. You can, it, it doesn't matter, but I'm giving you permission right now that this creating social media boundaries for you right now is essential. So many of us are, like I said, comparing and despairing. And what other people are doing is not, is not a, a measure of your success, right? I said this earlier, but I'm going to repeat it. Success lies in the actions you take not the results you make. When you're taking action, when you're getting out of this, right? This is not taking action. This is observing. This is taking in info. This is not actually taking action, right? Success lies in the actions you take, not the results you make. So what we want to do is get into a habit of taking action and then taking it easy. And so for those of us that are still working, God bless you, a minimum of just doing these three things, center yourself, craft your career, create community. For those of us that aren't working, a minimum of centering yourself, balance this out and create space in between. So that, because here's the thing, this is number seven, doing nothing is doing something. So taking time in between your actions is essential. In that space, you create space for the universe to come back and give you what it is you want. In that space, you create a moment for you to feel your feelings and be frustrated or disappointed or happy or excited, right? The quote was, success lies in the actions you take, not the results you make. So if you're taking action, and doing nothing, that's still an action. Doing nothing is doing something, right? We're not going to win a gold prize by taking every single class on backstage and every single class on whatever Facebook group you're a part of. But you are gonna build confidence. You are going to move through each moment if you create some space to live each moment. Number nine, nature. If you're not getting any nature, and this is so, it sounds so silly, go outside, get some fresh air, look at a tree, buy a tree. I brought this plant from my East Village apartment, and I'm so glad because <laughs> it's giving me life, right? So number eight. Write it down. As I said, with structure comes freedom. Sorry, I, I guess I skipped number eight. So bullet journal is what I wrote down. I use a bullet journal. If you don't know bullet journal, give me a what what if you like bullet journal. Because here's what's beautiful about a bullet journal. I mean, look at look at my notes. It's terrible. But this is how I structure my time. I make a list in bullet journal and it holds me accountable. And I look at this every day. Maybe for you, it's there's a digital way of doing it, but creating, again, like I said, structure. Write it down. Write down what you want. All these things, if you're writing this down right now, write down your, your if you want to use a wall calendar, whatever it is, with structure comes freedom. Find a way to structure. Passion planner, whoop, whoop, good. Passion planner is amazing. Cool. All right, like I said, number nine is nature. Get outside, make it a priority that you get some bit of nature. We need to remind ourselves of uh, where we come from, right? And the last thing that I'm gonna suggest, and we're gonna open it up for some Q and A, is to stop waiting. Stop waiting to learn the thing that you think you're supposed to learn in order to create the thing you think you're supposed to create. Just do it. Don't wait. Create. Don't wait. If you're thinking, I got to take that class in order to learn how to write that book. I got to learn how to self-tape more perfectly. Don't let perfectionism be the enemy of good. Just go for it. 
it is so easy to hide behind learning and input. And, you know, and this kind of goes back to nature. Nature is creation. You are a part of nature. You have to create. That's why you're an artist. So what is that thing? That thing that's been in the back of your head that you're like, I just want to do that thing. And just take one step towards doing it and make that the thing that's, that's your craft for the day. Maybe I just make the outline of the video I want to make. Maybe I just learn, just get the MP3 of the song I wanted to learn. Maybe I just outline the website. Whatever that is, take one step towards it. Number seven, again, was doing nothing is doing something. Give yourself permission to do nothing. So those are the 10 things I suggest. I'm sure you have, there's so many more things that we could do right now to structure our time. But to me, these are the 10 things that we can start to prioritize. Do, I think the most important is, is, and is number 10. You're a creator, create, do not wait. Do not wait for permission. You don't need Broadway to be back online to sing and dance. You don't need Hollywood to be filming again to get to be an actor. There are so many things at our disposal. If you don't know, I'm a big Disney nerd. That, that you don't need permission to do. So if you have been in the zone of learning, 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 you've got to balance your input versus your output. Put something out there and just do it this week. All right. And tag me and show it to me because I want to see it. This is so important that we create. The world needs to see you and what you do and the gifts you do. Okay. All right. I uh, just want to check all these notes. Okay. Here we go. Thomas, I'm going to repeat all 10 things that I think are important to structure our time. Number one, a morning routine. Number two, accountability. Number three, centering yourself. Number four, crafting your career. Number five, creating community. Number six, social media boundaries. Number seven, Doing nothing is doing something. Number eight, structuring your time. So is that a bullet journal? Is that a calendar? What do you use? And giving you permission, it's okay to use it. Dust it off if you haven't used it since everything shut down. Structure your time even now. Write it down. Number nine, get some nature. Get outside. Get a plant, whatever it is get some nature. And number 10, don't wait, create. Yes. Don't wait, create y'all. Okay. Let's see um, what questions do you guys have? I'm going to try to scroll. I think I missed some of these things. There's so many of you. I'm so glad you guys are here. Again, if you want help with accountability, go check out secureactorproject.com. Secureactorproject.com you get a download with a calendar and tips for structuring all your time. And you get to come join me in the Facebook group where we're doing really awesome interviews actually in June in the Secure Actor Project. I've got one of the resident directors from Hamilton. I've got um, a voice specialist. Um, we're gonna have some awesome community stuff in that group, okay? Structure is hard for performers because we're always away with the fairies creating. <laughs> Yes, that's why I give you, I, I say with structure comes freedom. If you want to create more, if you want to create more, create structure. Thanks, Heidi Dean. Okay, any advice for newer actors in terms of refining craft, learning, practicing? Any advice for newer actors in terms of refining? Yeah. Yes, always remember the work comes first. So if you're already really good at something, right? If you're a really good singer and you know that that's your strength, make it better. You can always be better. So many of us, especially musical theater, think, well, I have to be good at all of the things, but really you gotta be so strong at one thing. 
that's so people know that that's the person I go to for that. Yes, it helps you. The more skills you have, the more marketable you are. So if you if you're able to dance, if you're able to play an instrument, great. But if you're if you start if you are a great singer and you take your energy off of refining that craft to start dance to start taking a dance class and you're never going to be that great of a dancer then you're actually going to do yourself a, a, a big disservice right focus on the thing you do well and make it even better join a union or guild cuz job opportunities are going to be scarce soon well, Jack says that, and uh, unfortunately, I'm hearing that there's several union tours going non-union now, for theater at least. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's really, again, there's no reason to get too ambitious about joining a union right now when we don't know where the work is going to be. What you can do is meet the people you want to know, right? If your goal is to work on theater, if your goal is to work in television, where are those people online? Are you focusing on following them on social media, engaging in whatever they're engaging in, supporting them in their community? That's what the world needs right now. Uh, let's see, they're so great. I'm so glad. Oh, Gabrielle, thank you. I don't have Facebook. Can I still join the Secure Actor Project? Yes, Secure Actor Project actually will have a portal. When you join the Secure Actor Project, all the videos will live in that portal. You won't be able to join live on the calls unless you're in the Facebook group, but you will have access to all of the videos. Morning routine. Structure is hard for performers. And we read that. One of the questions, should I get a social media? Uh, Heidi, I think if you, if you don't have social media, I think Heidi would say, yes, you should get social media. The fact that you're saying, should I get a social media makes me uh, wonder um, if where you've been, because social media is, is everywhere. And if you want to meet people right now, especially be on social media. Okay. So TikTok. Yes. I don't think TikTok is bad for actors. I think it's all in how you use it. Okay. Here's a link. Great. Any other questions, concerns? How helpful was this for you? Do you feel like you have some tools to help you be a little less overwhelmed right now? Because this really lies in your hands. Great. Okay. This is something that came up in the Secure Actor Project this morning. And Cassandra asked, what's a good way to balance your craft with making sure money is coming in? getting on unemployment or working. Okay, first off, the Secure Actor Project is really created so that if, if, if you haven't, it's really created for the person who's already got some finances under their belt, right? It's totally free, but security starts with being able to have a roof over your head, being able to eat. And if you are in jeopardy of losing those things, then that's where your energy needs to be. So what are ways that people are doing that right now? I know they're looking for people to do, uh, what are they calling them? Uh, tracers, right? Tracers for testing tracers for COVID-19. You can apply online, you can take a test. There are plenty of jobs out there. And if you're looking for, if you know income's not as short, if you know that unemployment's not coming in, then I encourage you to start with income. This isn't about giving up on your dream. This is about, you know, you can't win an Oscar if you can't eat. So it starts with feeding yourself, a roof over your head. Um, so I encourage you that finances, don't don't wait, you know, like if you're not getting unemployment, if none of those things have come through, if you're a union actor, check out the Actors Fund. They're doing emergency assistant, check out, uh, assistance, check out Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. So helpful, great, I'm so glad. Yes, helpful, the challenge for me is to break down a large goal into smaller, just one thing, one day at a time. This is fabulous. Um, structure, 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 side jobs while we're not getting any income. 
So like I said, there's uh, testing tracers, I think they're called. Uh, somebody might know more of that. Um, there are people hiring. Now, something I talked about today too is I want you to just right now, while we're while you got your pen and paper, I want you to write down 10 things that you're good at. 10 things that you're good at. Being an expert does not mean that you have years of experience. Being an expert means you're just one step ahead of somebody else. So are you a good typist? Are you a good copywriter? Are you a good video editor? Are you good with sound? Are you good with flowers? Are you good? Like, what are you, what could you do that is valuable that someone else could use? 10 things. If you're looking for income right now on side jobs, go to Fiverr dot com and put a post up go to upwork so fiverr f-i-v-e-r-r dot com you can list your services for people to hire you go to upwork you can be a freelancer you can be a virtual assistant right go to craigslist and offer your services all right balancing acting with other hobbies Cody, I Cody asks thoughts on balancing acting with other hobbies. I always say, like I started this whole thing with focus. Pick the thing that you want to work on and know that this week, if I focus on singing and by Friday I'm a better singer and I feel good, I feel like I'm accomplished what my goal was to be a better singer, to sing a high G or high B, which is what I had to do in Wicked. If I had to sing a high B and I can do that by Friday, then I keep that, keep sustaining that skill. And then maybe, maybe once I'm good at that, I add the other thing. And trust that you can't, you, you can do everything. This is for all of you. You can do everything. You just can't do everything at once. So pick the thing right now in this moment that's gonna get you one step closer to where you wanna be. Online vocal lessons are cheap, great. Write a one act play, great. Or maybe instead of writing a one act play today, you just write a scene. And then you write another scene tomorrow. And then you write another scene the next day. And then all of a sudden you have a one act play. Uh, Grubhub, delivery drivers, yes. If you're comfortable with uh, being out there, Grubhub, Amazon's hiring, there are other side jobs. Any ideas for writers and a way to connect with people so we can set up pre-production during this time so there are things to accomplish once this all changes? Oh, good, Chloe. Any ideas for writers and a way to connect with people so we can set up pre-production? Yes. I mean, honestly, everyone's on social media. So making a short list, pitching your project, reaching out to people from a place of generosity. I talk a lot about how to, I have a course actually that I just taught called How to Talk Shop Without Schmoozing, Using, or Losing, where I talk to you how you can reach out to people in a way that's authentic and connecting with people. And I think that it's really important that you find the people who believe in your team, or believe in your project. So pitching your project to people, explaining to them what would benefit them and how you how it's mutually beneficial to get involved, what the story is, right? So reach out to people on social media and asking permission. Hey, is this the best way to reach out to you? What's the best way to reach out to you about projects and collaborations? And I'm telling you right now, so many people are online, they will get back to you. Other questions, I'm just scrolling. I struggle with feeling a creative project is finished. I could re-record a self-tape for days. Amen. How do you allow yourself to feel accomplished when nothing is live? Oh, amen. Okay. Let This goes back to what I said earlier. Do not let perfectionism be the enemy of good. Do not let perfectionism be the enemy of good. Just get her done because there is no failure, right? You could make a self-tape See how it goes. You're going to learn something on the other end of that. And then the next one will be better. But if you never actually put it out there, if you never actually try, you're never going to learn. 
So letting go and finding ways to let go. So one, one thing you could do is after the self tape is done, how do you reward yourself? What is something you can treat yourself with? It doesn't have to be dietary, right? But it can be something that in the end you, you know, you reward yourself. Maybe it's your, your outdoor walk. Maybe it's connecting with a friend, me, you know, however that is. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, is there a link for reaching out for the how to talk shop workshop? I think that's what you mean. Uh, there it's not currently live. So join the secure actor project. And when it goes live, which will probably be in the next couple of weeks, uh, you'll, you'll get access to it. So I'm trying my best, but I don't even know where to start as an actor. Do you have any advice? Yes. My advice is start acting. You don't need to give someone permission to act. You can read a play. You can memorize the scene, self-tape it, watch it back, post it, get feedback. That's great, Emily. Good idea. Get her done. Okay, I'll meet with the bank official. This is awesome. You guys are amazing. So there's lots of tools for, for you guys. People are putting in the in the comments here to help you. Um, I'm going to take three more questions, and then we'll wrap it up, OK? So I find it hard balancing my life in the working world and finding classes training that fits my crazy work schedule in New York City. Any advice or resources for someone like me? Yes. So uh, balancing my life. So if you're working, then I would say if and group classes are not fitting in with your time, work with someone privately. Who's the person, almost, and then here, here's the thing right now. Is there a director, a music director, a, uh, a writer that's on your target list? And if you don't have a target list, you don't know what a target list is, y'all gotta start following me. But is there somebody who, who you, who's on your list? They're, those people are not working right now they're probably offering services. So reach out to them. Now is your, your opportunity to work with those people, but do it in a focused way. Do it in a way where you get to work with that acting teacher privately. I think that that's the best way to go, especially if it's within your means financially. Uh, it's starting young, helpful, can't hurt. That's right, Jack. Sign up for Pi Network. How does someone jump from background into union looking for speaking roles? Mm, good question. Hold on. Yes, get her done. Don't stress. Okay. How does one, well, again, this goes back to doing the work. If you're, what I always say is, if it's not a hell yes, it's hell no. And what are your goals? Do you just want to be a working actor? then doing background work is a great way to just say I'm an actor and I'm working. If you want to do speaking roles, then you're going to have to start saying no. And you're going to have to create space. And you're going to have to remember that saying no is saying yes to something. And that might mean that you're not making money as an actor, but you're opening yourself up and creating space for the things you do want to have happen to happen. And that's really where you have to decide what's more important. Am I willing to risk not making money this way? And I have to find other ways to make money if that's my main source of income in order to refine my craft, become a leading player and book leading roles. Or am I perfectly happy being a background actor? There is nothing wrong with that. Okay. This is awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap this up and just say thank you all for being here. I'm so grateful to have so many, so much engagement. Please come check out the secureactorproject.com. I uh, will have a lineup for June coming out this week and lots of juicy, juicy other stuff coming out with the Secure Actor Project. I am really hoping this gives you a little bit of structure because it is so important right now. Don't wait for other people to do it for you. You can do this. You can get through this. It's just going to take one second, one minute, one day, one week at a time. 
all right? And I'm with you. We're all in this together. Bye.